Many thanks for staying with us this morning on The Breakfast. Uh, the second conversation for us is that there's an accusation uh, made by the APC against the NLC of hypocrisy over fuel subsidy removal. We have a guest joining the conversation, conversation this morning, Onyeka Christopher, he's the Assistant General Secretary, NLC Yaba Rahiendigas. Uh, Christopher, it's good to have you join us. Thank you for having me. All right. Good to be here once again. So quickly, uh, a bit of a background to the conversation. The All Progressive Congress APC Presidential Campaign Council has accused the leadership of the Nigerian Labour Congress, that's the NLC, of being hypocritical over the burning issues of fuel subsidy removal in the country. The Council Director, Media and Public Affairs, Mr. Festus Kiyamo, in a statement so faulted the leadership of the NLC for promising to mobilize its members across the 774 local government areas in Nigeria to ensure victory for the Labour Party presidential candidate, Mr. Peter Obi, in the next year's presidential election. Now, in justifying the Council's position, Kiyamo raised several questions about the stance of the NLC and he noted that before adopting Mr. Peter Obi as a candidate, did the leadership of the NLC have a conversation with him on the removal of fuel subsidy? If they did have the conversation, did Mr. Peter Obi agree to back down on the issue of subsidy removal? Was, what was the basis for supporting him? Did the organized labor agree with him if he did not back down on the issue? If no such discussion or conversation is held, does it mean that the leadership of the NLC uh, now fully supports the removal of fuel subsidy? Or will that not be reckless of the NLC to adopt a candidate without thoroughly interrogating the candidate on his policies as they affect the Nigerian workers and the masses? The NLC must make a public statement and come clean. Onyeka Christopher, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here. Well, uh, so, yeah. yes. So you, you probably <laughs> have you want had... me to respond to that? Yes, we're getting to that point. And so listening to, okay. you know, the thoughts, I'm sure that you've probably seen or read and heard of this before now. Uh, what would you say that the position of the NLC is on fuel subsidy removal or subsidy removal, however you want to look at it? Um, thank you. Um, at this time, it is important that we, uh, anybody that understands the trade union movement in Nigeria, and especially the Nigeria Labour Congress, uh, over the years, in fact, you're talking about decades, our position has remained un un unchanged on the subsidy issue. Uh, our, that position is that for you to uh, remove the subsidy, there are certain processes. There are certain milestones that must have to be met. So our position has not changed. Our position has rather been amplified or deepened. Our position has been given a voice, a further voice, by what um, the candidate of, uh, of, of the Labour Party for 2023 uh, presidential election has said. That there is no um, disagreement uh, between uh, the position of P2B and the position of the, of the trade union movement. We, we, we believe that it is rather a positive of understanding of the position of uh, the NLC on petroleum subsidy that made Teyamo. For Christ's sake, Teyamo was part of the struggle. He was in the civil society, though he's not of the labor movement. But he was part of the process that crafted the position of the trade union movement. He should know better. But for the fact that he had decided not to know, so uh, then that becomes his problem. I think that he is actually not worried about um, probably the pretended um, um, contradiction in our positions. He's only worried about the fact that the Nigerian uh, trade union movement are going to mobilize all over the 774 local governments in Nigeria to ensure that our candidates, especially um, the presidential candidate P2B, wins the next election. I think he's the fear. He cried out in fear without understanding the fact that um, that this position has been our position all this while. You cannot remove poor subsidy based on imported products. You can only remove poor subsidy when the refineries are working. And our, our, our position has been clear. Let the refineries work. 
when the refinery, the local refineries work, the issue of subsidy will die. And that is very simple. And that is what our candidate has said. He has said that I will deal with the issue of subsidy. He has said we are going to move the nation from consumption to production. And then he, what he said, he said, we are going to do what? Repair the refineries. And what the, the refineries are working for, Christ's sake, the issue of subsidy dies because you no longer have any issue, you know, importing fuels. Because the so-called subsidy claims, which is very, very fraudulent, which this party, APC, in 2014, told the whole Nigerians that it's a fraud, that it's a scam. And he said, when they, when they came on, they started enjoying the scam, the fraud. And so, um, what is surprised who is hypocritic? We think that Kayamo and the APC are the main hypocrites. They are so hypocritical that Nigerians are suffering over what they have termed uh, fuel subsidy. You could see that they have removed, under this regime, they have removed fuel subsidy almost like four times. What are they removing? You ask yourself. You told us in the first time that you were removing subsidy. You removed it. Later, you came again to tell us you are removing subsidy. Does this subsidy, is it a cat with nine lives? That's the question. Is it a cat with nine lives that cannot be removed once and for all? So they have kept on removing fresh subsidy. And in any case, their understanding of removal of fresh subsidy is price hike, which is very, very wrong. And uh, we have made it clear. Our position has not changed. It has remained the same over the years. We are not people who sit down and somewhere... And, you know, superficially crafts out a position. These positions are well thought out by the organs of the labor movement, jointly with the TUs. Our positions are very, very clear on this, and they are very, very deep. So what the candidate has done is to give voice to what we have said all this, all this why. Let our refineries work. As soon as our refineries work, the issue of fuel subsidy will be taken care of once and for all. They don't want it to be taken care of. That is why some of them are crying. That is why they are, they are money. Repair the refineries and first subsidy scam will stop. And that is our position. So we tell Kayamo to please go back to history. To still go back to all the conferences and meetings we have all had, which he also participated in. You know, and tell Nigerians what our position is. It has not changed. It has the same thing. God bless you. Okay, so um, we're still having this conversation. I mean, because of some of the questions that Festus Kayamo has raised. And over time, we understand that, like you have rightly mentioned, the position of the NLC as regards subsidy removal, you have never been in support. So um, with the NLC uh, throwing their support and saying, hey, we're going to support, uh, you know, the candidate of the Labour Party, that's Peter Obi, uh, are you saying that the NLC has, uh, you have had a conversation uh, with the presidential candidate, and you are saying that you are in support of removal of subsidy based on well, condition. If you right? listen, to, okay. If you listen to my uh, my. No, are you saying that there's a certain condition? I, w I want us to you know have this clarity. Yes, that is we, based on we have had this conversation. In fact, before he was adopted as a candidate of the Labour Party, we okay. had conversations. We do not bring people from the moon. There is a chatter of demand. Okay, by. Uh, NLC and TUC that has already been mainstreamed, that has already uh, been uh, kind of added into the Labour Party uh, charter. And so the, in those charter of demand, we have asked certain things. There are certain milestones. Look, this thing is in public space. All these years, it has been in public space. I wonder why Kayamo is, uh, is crying. I've told you why he's crying. So we had that discussion with, uh, recently, last week, we had the same conversation at the uh, uh, Labour Party National Retreat that took place in Abuja. I was there. A lot of people were there. TUC, NLC, civil society organizations were there. And we, the, these chapters of the man of the trade union movement was also read once again for the benefit of those who did not understand it. Let me reiterate the people, what constitutes that chapter of the man. All the trade unions in Nigeria, with the NLC having 40-something unions, TUC having 20 something unions, all of them came together. Each of these unions crafted their own charter of demands and they brought them together. And it was articulated into one particular, one particular um, um, uh, um, uh, 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 document and uh, was mainstreamed into the Labour Party. That is so, you find out that these are well thought out documents that represent all Nigerian workers and all Nigerian people from all facets of life. 
including you, my sister. It captures your own intentions concerning the poor subsidy issue and other issues that bothers us as common people in Nigeria. And so, Peter Obi, like I said, uh, he was speaking our mind. He was speaking our mind. It has not changed. Nothing has changed at all, at all, at all. That is our position. So was there Thank a time you. frame that was given as to when, I mean, paraventure he becomes, this is a conversation, very honest conversations that should be had or should be had yeah. and, and the one should have a different, you know, point. Uh, so was there a time frame that was given as regards when subsidy will be removed entirely? Because if you talk about having the refineries uh, refining the product, I mean, this would not just be a thing that happens in one day. I'm sure there are a lot of issues that need to be sorted out. So was that really a time frame that was given per eventually he becomes president? Uh, my sister, one thing I can assure you is that Nigerian workers and Nigerian people are represented in this government. It's an inclusive government. That is the truth. Because we are part, we are part of the process. We are part of the people that will drive all of this. And then to tell you whether it's 10 days, 20 days, is, uh, <laughs> uh, for me, it's not something that we could, we could decide now. But let me tell you one thing. Um, the, the APC government has told us that the refineries, uh, the protocol refinery will come on stream by 2023. I hope you are aware of that. Now, uh, I am conversant with issues in the petroleum industry. And that is the truth. I have engaged it severally in many ways. To repair a refinery is not rocket science. To get a refinery to come on stream, it's not rocket. In fact, to build a modular refinery from the scratch, it's not rocket science. And so those refineries will be repaired if the political will is there. If you remove greed and corruption, you repair the refineries in months. That is the truth. It is corruption. You know, it's, it's the fraud that is in the system that is preventing the refineries from being repaired. That is the truth. I will also tell you another story. In 20, uh, 2015, early 2015, some people called me to a meeting somewhere in a hotel, you know, Europeans and some civil society persons, you know, called me, 15 of them, interviewing me, sitting on one side, on the issue of petroleum subsidy and what was going to happen. And I explained to them, they raised the issue of the refinery, that the refinery was moribund. And I said the refineries are not moribund. And that is the truth. Some people want to cash, cash out on the refineries. They want to sell it to themselves. And see, so, so some of these issues. So I told them that you cannot remove petroleum subsidy in the way you're talking about. Let's repair the refineries. If we repair the refineries, subsidy will die naturally. That is the truth. And there's no two ways about it. And so if you talk about when the timeline, I will tell you that what is going to take to repair the refineries since the protocol refinery is going to come on stream next, to, uh, uh, next year, as promised by a, a APC, which we know is not going to happen as usual because corruption and the, and the fraud in the system has not been dealt with. I assure you that as soon as our candidate, Mr. Pito, be takes over in you know, governance in May 29, 2023, one of the priority areas will be to start refining the products locally to so get the refineries working. And like I told you, it is not okay science. Okay, the just, just, just before working. we go, um, Onyeka, uh, what, what's the position of the NLC on TAM? Uh, we're talking about turnaround maintenance that's been going on. Uh, some people say that, you know, is uh, a fraud. <laughs> but what's the position of the NLC? It's a fraud. It's, it's a, our position is holistic. Turnaround maintenance that they have embarked on is riddled with fraud. It's part of the, uh, the system of corruption that is going on. And so when we co when the Labour Party can... Well, when you say to, that, how? I mean, you, you, you need to... Um, turn around maintenance, if you remove the corruption in the turn around maintenance, turn around maintenance could be carried out quickly. That's what I'm saying, faster. And the money is, there will be value for money. If 10 billion naira, for example, is invested, Nigerians will get 10 billion naira to refer, to repair okay. the refineries. Not when 10 billion dollars is given, uh, uh, naira is given out. Then somebody does something for 100 million, and then the other nine point something um, uh, billion goes into private pockets to fund the elections and to co fund some of their activities. So what we are saying is that we are bringing in integrity. The Labour Party, Labour Party is uh, bringing Chris, in people centered. Onyeka, Christopher, that to we have the to process. go now. I mean, you know that uh, uh, the campaigns would definitely start on the 28th of September 2022, and so. Uh, it, it will be important for us to hold on up until that time 
before we begin to check out, you know, <laughs> That's what campaigns. That's right. uh, thank you so much, Onyeka Christopher, Assistant General Secretary of the NLC right here in Lagos. We appreciate your time and thoughts. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you for having me. Well, that's the size of the conversation. Turnaround maintenance, the issue of the NLC, uh, fuel subsidy removal, Festus Kiamo, and what have you. However, the NLC is saying that the position, uh, you know, on fuel subsidy and this removal is that when the refineries for subsidy to be removed, the refineries needs to be functional. And uh, that's when they can fully support the removal of a subsidy well that's it this morning on the breakfast it's been quite interesting uh, for us here seven o'clock on the till now we'll do this tomorrow thank you so much for being with us if you missed out on any part of the conversation it will be okay to follow us on facebook twitter and instagram and subscribe to youtube channel at plus tv africa and plus tv africa lifestyle my name is messi ebopo thanks for watching